Hey guys, Mr. Wilhelm here. Today I am here to discuss with you the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is where plants take sunlight and turn that sunlight into food. We would call this energy transformation, taking one form of energy and transforming it into another. So photosynthesis is defined as a process by which plants and other autotrophs turn the energy of sunlight into sugars. This requires sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Now, in this statement, let's look at a couple of terms. First off, we have autotrophs. Okay? Autotrophs are any type of organism that can take sunlight and transform that into food. Okay? Um, plants are not the only organisms that can do this. There's some very, very simple uh, organisms, uh, single cell organisms. One is called Euglena. Uh, it can take sunlight and transform that sunlight into food. Okay? Um, so autotrophs. Auto okay, means that they can make their own food. Uh, we as humans and, and animals are heterotrophs, meaning we have to get our food from an outside source. Couple other terms here. Sugars. Now, whenever we eat food, we break our food, we transform our food into sugar. Okay? Plants do the exact same thing. They take another resource and transform that into sugar, except their resource is sunlight. Okay? And as it says right here, you have sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. Put all those together, and then the plant go through the process of photosynthesis and transforms that into sugar. Now down here, we have an equation. Let's look at the various parts of this equation. First off, we have CO2, okay? That is carbon dioxide. Okay, carbon dioxide. We all know what carbon dioxide is. That's the gas that, uh, that we exhale. The plants use that gas. Okay, so carbon dioxide. This part right here, you've seen this. That is obviously water. Okay, so they take carbon dioxide, water, and then light. Usually this is sunlight. It can be artificial light. Some plants will grow inside using artificial light, light from light fixtures in a room. But usually obviously it's sunlight. Okay, so we take water, carbon dioxide, light, and then this little arrow right here means to yield or to ch change, okay? And we're going to change. We're going to take those three things, we're going to put them together, and we're going to change those substances into this right here, which is sugar. And then we also produce this other substance, O2, which is oxygen. And we've heard this before. Plants use carbon dioxide and then they give off oxygen. Uh, this is a win-win situation for us because we're the exact opposite. We use oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. So we have a uh, relationship with plants. Okay, so photosynthesis is this process by where I take carbon dioxide and water and light and transform that into food, which is in the form of sugar and oxygen. Uh, this occurs in the leaves of the plants, in these little organelles inside the plant leaf cells called chloroplasts. And we're going to look at these various parts. So let's look at the basic leaf structure and where all of this photosynthesis happens. Okay. Here is a leaf. Okay. Uh, in the leaf, we have what's called stoma or stomata, okay? Uh, depends upon if you're talking about the singular or the plural form of that. Stoma, right here. And these the stoma are these little bitty openings in the leaf. They're little pores, little holes, if you will, in the leaf. And that is where the carbon dioxide is absorbed and taken in, okay? Along with some water. Then you have what's called a mesophyll cell, okay? 
mesophyll cell. Basically, that's the cell that has chloroplasts in it and is going to go through photosynthesis. And then lastly, you have chloroplasts. And chloroplasts are these little green structures inside the cell. Okay, and we've talked about chloroplasts before when we're studying our um, cell parts, our plant and animal cell parts. And chloroplasts are the little green structures that take sunlight make this whole process work. Take sunlight and carbon dioxide and water and transform that into sugar and also oxygen. Okay? And we also emphasize that the chloroplasts, being little green structures, are what make the leaf green. The leaf is green because the chloroplasts are green. So a little bit of a zoom in look at the stomata. Okay? The pores in the plant. So stomata are pores in a plant and a leaf through which water and gases are exchanged between the plant and the atmosphere. So, we know that the plant needs carbon dioxide, so carbon dioxide goes in, and then at the same time, oxygen is coming out. Carbon dioxide in, oxygen out. Very similar to our breathing. Okay, we take carbon dioxide, or excuse me, we take oxygen in and breathe carbon dioxide out, opposite of the plant. Um, but it's that same respiration process. Obviously, plant cells and plant leaves don't have lungs. Um, however, the process is very, very similar. So zooming in a little bit further, we're going to now look at the basic plant cell, okay? the plant, the basic leaf, leaf cell. And again, we call that a mesophyll cell. Okay? It's a leaf cell. It contains the chloroplast. So the mesophyll cell is a cell found on the surface of the leaf. Okay? You have some of these structures that you've seen before. You have the cell wall, okay, which is the outermost layer of the cell. It's rigid, hard, it protects the plant or excuse me, the, uh, the plant cell. Okay? You have the vacuole. Okay? In the vacuole, that is where the plant stores water and other, uh, other supplies. Okay? That's going to be important later on because we're going to talk about some other terms like turgor pressure and wilting. Okay, has to do with the water content, how much water is inside that plant cell, which is this area right here, which we call the vacuum. You have the nucleus. We all know the nucleus. That is the control center of the cell. And then last but not least, we have the little green structures, and we call those guys chloroplasts. Okay, and chloroplast, and that is where this energy transformation takes place, is in those green structures. Now, continuing to zoom in, let's look at the individual chloroplast. Okay, this is a representation of a chloroplast, which you might see if you uh, looked underneath a microscope on high power at a, at a chloroplast. Very simple, it's green, okay? You have these little disks that you see inside of the chloroplast, okay? And this guy is all about taking light and transforming that into sugar, okay? We're taking light, which we've talked about being radiant energy, and transforming it into sugar, which is chemical energy. Okay, so here's our equation again, and here is kind of a, an outline of this particular equation. So again, we have CO2, which is carbon dioxide, and then we have water, H2O, water, and we have light. So we take those three things and we add them together, and then we put those things together inside the chloroplast. The chloroplast does its magic, goes through that process, and then on the other side of that process, those things are turned into sugar and oxygen. Okay? So again, we have light, okay, which is what we call radiant. energy, and that is transformed into sugar, which is chemical energy. Now, 
something I want you to notice here. All of the same substances are here on both sides of the equation, both the before the transformation takes place and the after the transformation takes place. If you look at the before, I'm going to erase this to make it a little bit more clear. If you look at the before, we have carbon dioxide, and in carbon dioxide, we have carbon and we have oxygen. If you look at the after, we have carbon and oxygen. The before, we have hydrogen. And the after, we have hydrogen. And that's all there is. Obviously, we have light as well that we add in. But with regards to elements, we have carbon, carbon, oxygen, oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen. And you'll learn more when you get to chemistry that when we, every time we have a chemical reaction and we have an energy transformation or we have a new chemical or new substance that is formed, all of the substances that were in the before picture are also in the after. Right, we didn't make up anything new. You don't all of a sudden see chlorine or neon or any other new element or helium. All of the same elements are here, both before and after. So it's a relatively simple process, although it appears to be very complex. Take carbon dioxide, water, and light, put that together. The chloroplast, the little green structure, takes that, transforms that. There's that word, transformation, transforms that into sugar, taking radiant energy and transforming that into chemical.